This is the third of the three videos on inhalers and the environment. In the first video, we talked about the climate crisis, greenhouse gases, and the direction the NHS is going to try to reduce emissions over the next couple of years. The second one went into a lot more detail about inhalers specifically, and hopefully will help you come up with ideas to tackle the issue of MDIs in your practice. Finally, let's talk to our expert, Leila Siebert, to understand a bit more about the pitfalls and benefits of doing a proper eco-medication inhaler review. Hi there, my name is Leila Siebert and I'm a clinical pharmacist in general practice. Part of my role is carrying out medication reviews for people with asthma and COPD. You might ask, which patients should we call in for a review with the aim of switching their inhalers from an MDI to a DPI? Well, the outcome of any review should be optimising care for people with COPD. Or asthma. People that are likely to benefit from this switch will be those that aren't currently achieving the best outcome from their respiratory medicines. Patients to focus on may be those people that are collecting frequent SABA inhalers. So that would be anybody who's collecting three or more salbutamol or terbutaline inhalers in the year. Those who have had two or more courses of prednisolone in the previous year. People under ordering their treatment or preventer inhaler, so that's their inhaler containing inhaler corticosteroid, or anybody who has had one or more asthma or COPD related admission to hospital in the previous year. Also, when carrying out routine or annual reviews, it's important to consider moving those who are on a mixture of an MDI and a DPI inhaler over to all DPI inhalers. And this will hopefully streamline inhaler technique and improve technique overall. And last but not least, it's important to consider a switch or offer a switch to those patients who are well controlled, but would be happy to move from using an MDI to a DPI. Once we've invited in for a review, there are some key tips on optimizing therapy and getting the most out of that review. It's advisable for the review to be face-to-face -face, if at all possible. This will mean that you'll get a really good feel for what's going on with the patient. We'll also give you the best chance on getting inhaler technique right. This is really tricky to do over the telephone and might be achievable by video consultation but face-to-face -face is definitely, definitely best. Can't stress enough how important it is to give patients the space to be totally honest about what they've been doing with their inhalers. It's in nobody's best interest if we ask questions like, you're getting on okay with your inhaler? and we're nodding for them, or are you using your inhalers okay? Those questions like that will just end in the patient telling you what you want to hear for a tick box exercise review, and nobody benefits from that. So I will often use questions, open questions like, so tell me, have you been getting on with your inhalers? Or tell me what you do with your inhalers. Do you use them every day, some days? Really give the person the room and the space to tell you if they're not using their inhalers or if they're not getting on with them very well. And I will often say to a person, it's absolutely fine. You know, if you're not using your inhalers, let me know that that's the case. We'll work out together what the problem is and then we can move forward and make a plan that means that things will work better for you. If you are going to be recommending more dry powder inhalers, as a healthcare professional, it would be really, really useful to get to know the key inhalers that are recommended in your local guidelines. Inhaler technique and getting to know how to use the broad range of inhalers that are available to us can feel a bit overwhelming because the number of inhalers on the market is absolutely mind-blowing. But if we know what inhalers are being recommended locally and we get to know them, we get to know how to use them, we get to know how to demonstrate them for our patients, then we will really empower our patients in how to best use their inhalers. Something good to do is to contact your local pharmaceutical reps for the different inhalers or manufacturers, get to know how you can access bulk amounts of placebo inhalers and have them available within your practice when you're carrying out the reviews. And this means that if you are recommending a particular inhaler, you have one to demonstrate to the patient with and you can also give the patient an inhaler to show you whether or not they can use them. It does mean that you might get through quite a lot of placebo inhalers, but it can really make the difference in ensuring that the person can use their inhaler or not. Something else that really helps is asking patients to always bring their inhalers in when they come in for review. Asking them to demonstrate how they use their current inhalers will give you an idea as to any problems with things like dexterity or inspiratory flow, so that even if you are going to switch inhalers, you've got an idea on how the patient's currently getting on and whether inhaler technique might 
might be the cause of their therapy not working. When you do ask the patient to show you how to use their inhaler, it's really, really important that we see how they use their inhaler from start to finish. Activating an inhaler, compressing a lever, those parts of the process are just as important and critical in ensuring the person gets the most out of their inhaler as the inspiration part. By us knowing ourselves how we use the inhaler from start to finish, we can demonstrate but we can also assess if the person, you know, is able to use the inhaler from start to finish and that, that's really, really critical. A lot of people have a really good inspiratory flow, you know, they can use a dry powder inhaler from that aspect but there may be a dexterity problem that means that they can't compress a lever or they can't quite pull the lid down. And if they can't do that, then having a great inspiratory flow isn't gonna help them because they can't actually get to, to the mouthpiece in the first place. But that is also really key and will give you the assurance as the healthcare professional that if you've made a change and you've given them a new inhaler, as they walk out the room, they're gonna be able to use it when they get home. Investing time in getting an inhaler technique right is worth the investment. It's worth the investment for the person because the actual Extra 10 minutes spent in maybe thinking, okay, well, that inhaler doesn't work for you, we'll try something else. And then maybe spending an extra 10 or 20 minutes on getting that technique right can be the difference between that person needing to come and see the GP, you know, 10 times over the next year because their asthma isn't controlled or being admitted to hospital. Inhaler therapy is the mainstay treatment for respiratory conditions. And if we get it right, then we get the person's treatment right. If you don't have access to lots of placebos or you don't have the placebo device that you want to show a person how to use, then you can use the videos on the Right Breathe app or on the Asthma UK website. Sit with the patient and show them there and then this is how you use the inhaler. It's never quite as good as actually, you know, giving the person a chance to hold the inhaler and, and show you how they can use it there and then, but it's definitely much better than the person not being shown at all how to use their inhaler. DPIs have many advantages over NDIs and it's really good to explain those to patients. One of the advantages is all DPIs that I know of have a counter on them compared to most of the older NDIs that don't have counters on them. So this inhaler here is the Salbutamol Easy Haler. It's a dry powder device and is the dry powder alternative to a Salbutamol or a Ventolin MDI. The big difference, other than the fact that it has a counter, is that the coordination of activating and inhaling the inhaler isn't needed. So with the easy inhaler, for example, the inhaler is activated by pressing it down and the person can then concentrate on just inhaling compared to an MDI where the person will need to make sure they've got really good technique where they press down and inhale at the same time. That is a big advantage for um, those switching to a, a DPI compared to an MDI, that coordination is no longer needed. In addition to DPIs having a counter and not requiring the coordination of compressing the device and inhaling, DPIs don't require a spacer device to be used. And that's a big benefit of using a DPI versus an MDI with a spacer. Lots of people don't like to use spacers, they're cumbersome, they get in the way, they just don't like them. We don't need to think about them if we're recommending the DPI. I've spoken a lot about the importance of good inhaler technique and it being really worthwhile investing time in this. I often use an analogy to explain why good inhaler technique is so important. It's often the reason for a light bulb moment in patients where they understand something that they never have done before. The analogy goes like this. If we have a rash or some eczema on our skin, often it's treated with a cream. And if we want to effectively treat that eczema, we will pop some cream on our hands, assess where we want to put the cream, pop the cream in the right place and rub it in and hope that the treatment works. What I've just described for treating eczema is akin to good inhaler technique when we inhale medication down into our lungs effectively. With effective inhaler technique, the medication is inhaled down past our throat, down into our upper and the lower airways into our lungs where the medication works. If we have poor inhaler technique, what can often happen is an aerosol or a powder can end up in our throat or in our mouth and we swallow it rather than it ending up down in our lungs. So this is akin to popping some cream on your hand, closing your eyes, holding your arm out and slapping the cream on your arm without knowing that it's ended up in the right place. The likelihood is that the cream isn't going to be in the right place and the eczema isn't going to be treated. That's exactly what's happening when we're using an inhaler that isn't being used correctly 
and we're just hoping for the best. Hopefully what I've described will help you in practice carry out an effective asthma or CAPD review for your patients and maybe switch them from an MDI to a DPI if that's appropriate. What is then really important is that the changes that we've made are sustained for the person and that they continue over a long period of time to benefit from the treatment that we've given them. One thing that I've found works really well in making sure that any changes that have happened are working for the patient is to review them two to four weeks after the initial review or any changes were made. That might be back in practice face to face if that's what works best for the patient or it might be okay to call the patient up and just get a feel for how they're getting on. The focus of that review should be on how well the patient is doing from an asthma or COPD symptom score. So something like the asthma control test or the CAT, the COPD assessment test can be used at baseline at the initial review and then at the review two to four weeks later to see if any difference has been made to the person's symptoms. That will give you a good assessment as a healthcare professional as to whether your change has made a difference or not or if there have been negative effects. Now something that you will often hear from people who are switched from an MDI to a DPI is, oh, I don't know, I, just, I, I don't quite like this inhaler. I, I can't taste it anymore, or I just, I, I can't feel it. You know, when I breathe it in, I don't feel it in the throat like I used to. It's really, really common. It's great when you do hear it, even though the person doesn't think it's a good thing, because you can very quickly explain to the person why that's actually a good thing and why that indicates that it likely means that they're getting more medication down into their airways. With MDI inhalers, the aerosol comes out of them, often does hit the back of the throat or ends up in the mouth and the person swallows it. And if we can explain to the person that actually by changing their inhaler to a DPI and them now not feeling it in their mouth, that this means that the medication is going down to their airways rather than their mouth or throat, we can actually provide them with some reassurance that what we've done is definitely in their best interest. And again, often a light bulb moment and the person thinks, oh, actually, yeah, that makes sense. I want my lung condition to be treated in my lungs and not in my mouth. It's really, really important that when we call people to review how they've been getting on with their changed inhalers, that we don't need jerk just change back to what they were on previously because they tell us that they don't like what they've got or they feel like they're not getting on with it. The focus is on have things improved from their respiratory condition point of view. If they have, great. And if they haven't, it might be that we need to bring them back in to reassess inhaler technique, show them once again how to effectively use their inhaler. And it might be that a further change is needed, not necessarily back to an MDI, but to another DPI, for example, that the person can use better. So there really is some nuance and some detail there around getting inhaler technique right. But if we invest in it and we listen to the person and we really, really make sure that we make changes that suit them, then, then we can make such a massive difference. My experience has been that most people can definitely use a dry powder inhaler. It may be that they can't use every dry powder inhaler, but there is often a dry powder inhaler that they can get used to and can effectively use after some counselling on how to use effectively. There will be a small proportion of people who just don't get on with a dry powder inhaler, and that might mean that we need to continue prescribing them a metered dose inhaler with a spacer if that inhaler contains inhaled corticosteroid. So this comes back to my initial comment of optimising care and getting the treatment right for the patient is the most important part of any respiratory review. If people do need to carry on using MDIs and care is optimal, we will still have benefited the environment. We will still have reduced the impact of their treatment on the overall carbon footprint of healthcare because by optimising care, we will reduce use of short-acting beta agonists, so MDIs, and we will also reduce the person's carbon footprint in terms of access to healthcare if their disease is well controlled. And one last thing, if we do consider it appropriate for people to continue using an MDI, because that's the best thing for them, we must remind them that effective disposal is to take their inhalers back to the community pharmacy for them to dispose of professionally, rather than them just popping the inhaler in their domestic bin. Thank you. And that is all for now, of course. A massive thanks to everyone at the Salford CCG for helping us make these videos. And please do stay in touch. Let's really get this discussion flowing. Contact us via social media and share it with your colleagues and friends. And let's take the first step to a better planet together.